With a career spanning 40 years, Sir Ridley Scott has made a bunch of awesome movies, having experimented in several different genres, though in recent years his projects have been somewhat questionable. Let's not forget this was the guy attached to create a Monopoly movie at one point. Yes, the board game. Do not pass go! Do not collect $200! Despite his recent transgressions, Scott is still fondly remembered for 1979's Alien. He made his inglorious return to the franchise with 2012's Prometheus. And as well as Covenant, Scott claims to have ideas for 27 other prequels. Because we all left Prometheus wanting more, right? Well, yeah, we kind of did actually, for obvious reasons. But we'll go on to that. In this video, we'll be asking the question on everyone's lips. What the hell was the black goo? Wait. That came out wrong. I mean, is Ridley the right guy to lead the Alien franchise, given his recent string of flops? Isn't he a little overrated these days? We have to stress here, we're not trying to shit on the bloke. We have massive respect for his work, particularly the early stuff. We just can't shake the feeling that Covenant won't meet everyone's lofty expectations. As if you didn't know, the original movie follows the crew of the Nostromo, who respond to a distress signal on distant planet LV-426. Only, one of them gets violently mouth-raped, then gives birth at the breakfast table. Okay, I know this isn't alien. I just love space balls, okay? The unholy progeny goes on to massacre the entire crew. Well, except for Warrant Officer Ripley, believe it or not. Basically, it's a haunted house movie set in space that taught us one important lesson. Don't ever answer distress calls. Cause helping people is bad, okay? Star Beast, as it was initially titled, was greenlit after the massive success of Star Wars and continued the rule of no bras in space, though even Sigourney Weaver's nips and pussy cat couldn't rescue the movie from mixed reviews on release. James Cameron's 1986 sequel, cleverly titled Aliens, took the franchise into action movie territory and expertly expanded the mythos. Many even suggest Cameron's movie is the better of the two, but come on, Reebok sneakers in the future? They're not even popular in the current year? What were you thinking, James? Sadly though, the inevitable happened. Fox execs got a whiff of cash and many a lackluster sequel followed. I think everyone remembers the first time a xenomorph scared them shitless. It's possibly the most terrifying monster committed to film. Even scarier than the creeper. And he was... Well, he was shite, wasn't he? It's testament to Hans Rudolf Giger's haunting art and subsequent design work that the Xeno has endured so long. He definitely aged better than any of the cast. So it's disappointing that later Alien movies have failed to hit the mark, often making you feel like a horribly mutated Ripley clone. So when Sir Ridley came back to the fold, it offered a glimmer of hope. We'll examine Prometheus more in depth in a sec. But first, let's take a look at Sir Rid's recent work. To be fair, Scott's last film was a pretty good one. The Martian was a long-awaited return to form, owing heavily to a script penned by Drew Goddard and adapted from Andy Weir's best-selling novel. In the 15 years prior to The Martian, however, only five films stand out as being any good, and I'm being massively generous to Kingdom of Heaven here. Interestingly, the crap movies all bear similar hallmarks, promising premises, beautiful cinematography, a wealth of acting talent, all tempered by terrible writing, which seems to be Ridley's kryptonite. Take the counselor. Doesn't it seem strange that Scott chose to direct a script by Cormac McCarthy? A fantastic novelist, to be sure, but not someone tried and tested in the realm of screenwriting. With this in mind, let's come back to Prometheus. We know there are some out there who will defend this movie to the death. But for your average moviegoer, the film was ungratifying. Even the love your long time fanboys were unimpressed. The real problem came down to the sudden change of direction. Damon, I'm lost, Lindelof was hired to rework John Spate's script. A story he and Scott spent months meticulously planning. So what started as a direct prequel to Alien became another attempt to heighten the mythos. Unfortunately, the end result is a hodgepodge. Neither one thing nor the other. But again, the movie looked great. In fairness, maybe Scott got caught in the crossfire. It seems the studio elected to extend the story, again hoping to maximise profits. Only Prometheus didn't fare too well at the box office. Sadly, classic sci-fi horror franchises don't have the financial legs they once did, especially when you water the material down. The fact is it becomes more and more difficult to deliver fresh, satisfying takes on beloved movies. Like the time George and Steve ass-raped Indy, now let's bring in a controversial idea. We reckon the Xenomorph has very limited scope outside the first two movies. You have the psychological horror that shows very little, inviting your subconscious to fill in the rest of the nightmare. Then you have the action thriller that ups the ante in every possible way. Armies of Xenos, who mostly came in there, glorious weapons, a freaking power loader, not to mention an alien queen. 
The abundance of crappy threequels is surely evidence that it's tough to maintain momentum after a second movie, so by the time Prometheus came around, the Xeno had been battered beyond recognition. Mama. The only credible option was to take the Xeno back to its roots to explore the history. We can't fault Scott for trying to take this on. There are lofty themes and ideas for sure. We get questions on the origins of life, the creator's responsibility to its creation, religion, and even space Jesus, possibly. But that's all they are questions. The problem is now all those mysteries bleed through to Covenant. Not only does it have to be a good alien movie, but it also has to satisfyingly make up for Prometheus's shortcomings. The new movie picks up 10 years after David got decapitated, as if being subjected to a Mortal Kombat style fatality. But he fucking survived. And thanks to an abundance of promo material, we have a pretty good idea what's going on. But this tendency to show everything in the marketing is kind of worrying. If past examples are anything to go by, this really indicates a studio isn't confident in its product. Remember how we got all those spoilers in the BVS trailers? Remember how that turned out? Encouragingly, Scott has returned to the traditional horror roots, and it appears all the prerequisite elements are in place. But again, I'm not 100% convinced in his choice of writers. Among the four scribes, their previous credits include Star Trek Nemesis, Green Lantern, and Transcendence? While none of this inspires confidence, at least Lindelof wasn't involved this time. The worst thing that could happen is that it turns out to be another Prometheus. All intrigue and no resolution. We're fine with movies asking us the big questions, but you have to give some satisfying answers, especially the second time around. We don't want backbusters, protomorphs and neomorphs just for the sake of it. There has to be a raison d'etre. I was raised French. In his senior years, Sir Ridley seems to want to create a legacy, and it appears he's trying to wrestle back control of the franchise he bought kicking and screeching into the world. But just like the Xenomorph, this beast is hard to rein in. Even if this movie is perfect, you know the company will eventually infect another hapless victim in the hopes of bringing an aggressive, violent life form to Earth, which is the cash in this analogy. Alien equals money, and despite the limited scope for such a concept, there are company men out there who are willing to do anything for a buck, including getting you mouth raped. Interestingly, there was another alien movie being touted a few years back. Neil, you fucking brawn Blomkamp's Alien 5, which would allegedly have retconned the events of Alien 3 and 4. Now, the concept art alone had a lot of people gushing at this possibility, but that sly old dog Sir Ridley cock-blocked the director, and now he's hell-bent on making further prequels. But we dare say if Covenant isn't financially successful, Blomkamp will almost certainly come back to the fold. But this is another guy who's very hit and miss. So will Alien Covenant be any good? The feedback has been pretty positive so far, but who really trusts Rotten Tomatoes these days? With that said, the Doopy Bros are very much looking forward to the new movie, and we'd love to see Sir Ridley knock it out of the park. Who knows, maybe its legacy will be to show Prometheus in a more favourable light, and restoring some much needed hope to the Alien franchise. Or should that be despair? Thanks for watching guys, we'd love to know your thoughts. Is Ridley the right man for the job? Can you think of a better idea for an alien movie? And what is that black goo? Please, someone tell me in the comments and be sure to give us a thumbs up. These videos take bloody ages to put together. It's the least you could do, really.